There are a few things more impossible than trying to get revenge against a narcissist. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why this is and what the best way to get revenge really is. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I am not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. I think even the most patient, forgiving person in the world may be tested by the things that narcissists are capable of doing. It's perfectly natural and normal to want some kind of revenge against narcissistic people that have hurt us, that have betrayed us, that have perpetrated frauds against us, that have taken advantage of our love and taken advantage of our vulnerabilities and then blamed us for the things that they've done. So I first want to say that if you are preoccupied with the idea of revenge, there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's perfectly natural and it's more than understandable why you would want revenge against someone that has done such heartless, cruel things to you. It's all well and good to say that forgiveness is healing and to forgive and forget is just taking the higher road. That's fine, but it's really not that easy to do when someone has done these kinds of things to you. It's really not that easy to do when you're still reeling and you're still trying to process traumatic events that you never saw coming. Forgiveness is great, but it's not something that just happens overnight. And I don't believe it's something that we choose to do. I believe it's something that we work on and we work towards, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting revenge in the meantime while we're processing what's happened to us. So let's first dissect the idea of what revenge is. Why do we want revenge? Why can some of us become completely preoccupied and even obsessed with the idea of how to get revenge? In my opinion, revenge has two parts. The first part is to teach someone a lesson, to show the narcissist that they have done something terrible and to make them somehow recognize the significance of the damage they've caused. And the second part is the desire to make somebody pay for the way that they've hurt you. I think it's perfectly natural when somebody has hurt you so deeply to want to hurt them back. And it doesn't matter if this is a constructive or healthy emotion to have, it's a perfectly natural emotion to have when we've been hurt so deeply. So if we look at these two sides of revenge, we can also understand why it's so difficult to get revenge against a narcissist. The first part, to make somebody understand what they've done and to make them recognize how wrong their actions are, this is something that is really never going to be achieved against a narcissist. Narcissism is a pathology and narcissists have a very rigid mindset that is set up specifically to avoid accountability. It's set up specifically to establish a very effective delusional mindset that can help the narcissist stay convinced that they are blameless and that anything wrong they've done was done out of defensiveness and that everything is somehow your fault or everybody else's fault. This is a huge part of narcissism and there is really no practical way to get around this. If there was a way to get through to a narcissist, if there was a way to make a narcissist understand how much they have hurt someone for no good reason, then we really wouldn't have the problems we do with them. This is part of the problem. Narcissists have an extremely difficult time self-reflecting and you're not gonna convince them to self-reflect. In the rare occasions that a narcissist is able to self-reflect, that desire comes from within them. It's a decision they make on their own and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything that you're able to do for them or to them. And it's certainly not going to be the result of any vindictive action you take against them. The angrier you are and the more vindictive your actions are against them, the higher their walls are going to go, the more defensive they're going to become and the less likely they're going to be to self-reflect, the less likely they're going to be to accept that they've done anything wrong. 
No one understands more than me how frustrating this is, but it's really important to recognize the truth that the harder you try to teach a narcissist a lesson, the more frustrated you get, the angrier you get, the more vindictive you get, the more they feel justified in the things that they've done, the less likely they are to learn their lesson. You simply cannot exact revenge in this way. Even if you're able to do something that hurts them in some way, they're not going to recognize that as any sort of justifiable act of revenge. They're just going to be further convinced that you're the bad guy and they're the victim. It's actually going to work against you. It's going to make things worse. It may become something that they can show to other people to show other people how awful you are and how justified they were in all the terrible things they did to you. It's also important to understand that narcissists enjoy attention. They enjoy your frustration. They like it when you're angry and frustrated with them. It makes them feel important. When they're able to affect your emotions, no matter if those emotions are positive or negative, it makes them feel powerful. Normal people don't really like having somebody angry at them, yelling at them, trying to get revenge against them, hating them, being upset with them. For normal people, this usually will bother them at least a little bit, especially if it was somebody that was close to them. With narcissists, it just does not work that way. And it's so important to stop yourself and stop Stop projecting your own way of perceiving reality onto a narcissist. Narcissists don't mind being yelled at. They like anger being directed towards them. They thrive on the frustration they've caused. If you're trying to seek revenge against a narcissist, the last thing you want to do is show them how upset they've made you. Your upset and frustration is a reward for them. It's the opposite of revenge. Now, what if you were to expose a narcissist? I see a lot of questions online and comments online about exposing narcissists. I honestly don't really understand what this means, and I'm sure that it can vary from story to story. Obviously, if a narcissist is doing something illegal, especially if it's something that's hurting other people, then that's something that you should take action against. And it's something that you can take action against. But don't expect the narcissist to think that you're at all justified in your actions and don't expect the narcissist to learn their lesson. Even exposing a narcissist for illegal activity is not an act of revenge. It's just something that you should do if it's something that's going to protect you from them. Now, if we're talking about exposing a narcissist in the way of telling a narcissist's friends and family all the terrible things they've done to you, I personally recommend against this unless it's done strictly for the purpose of burning your bridges because most of the people that are still friends or still associated or still on the side of the narcissist, they're really not interested in what you have to say. For you, this may have been a horrible, painful situation and the narcissist has done terrible things to you, but the people that are still in the narcissist's life they're either not going to believe you or they're not going to care. The good people that are going to stick by you, the good people that are going to be fair to you can already see that they don't have enough to judge you by. Healthy, mature adults know that it's not fair to judge people when they don't have the whole story. Anyone that you feel the need to explain yourself to is probably not going to listen. And when you go around trying to expose a narcissist to his or her friends and family, it feeds into the narcissist's love of attention and it makes you look like the unstable one, even if you're telling the truth. I'll be the first to say that this is incredibly unfair, extremely frustrating. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying that this is the way it is. There are many people in this world that simply don't care about fairness, don't care about truth, don't care about justice, don't care what actually happened. There are people that just side with the narcissist for whatever reason. Maybe that narcissist feeds their ego. Maybe they're dependent on the narcissist for some reason. Maybe they're related to the narcissist and 
they just will never consider ever betraying or turning on the narcissist no matter what kind of horrible things this person does. And for you to come along and expect people to take your side, it's really not a realistic expectation. People that really care about the truth and really care about fairness are not people that you need to say anything to. Now, don't worry, I am going to get a little bit into how you really can get revenge or, or what type of revenge you actually can get against a narcissist. But I first wanna talk a little bit about this desire for revenge. I'm sure it's different for everyone, but for me, the desire for revenge was more of a desire to be understood and to be acknowledged and to be validated. Narcissistic abuse is traumatizing, especially when we've been hurt, we've been lied to, we've been lied about, we've been used, abused, betrayed in the most unthinkable, hurtful ways possible. And then we've been blamed for what's happened and sometimes all we want is for somebody to listen, for someone to understand. And it can be next to impossible for us to accept and understand that the narcissist is the last person on earth that we need this kind of validation from. It can feel like the narcissist is the only person that can give us this validation and that can give us this closure and that can give us this satisfaction of acknowledging what we've been through and acknowledging what they've done. But narcissists simply will never do this. They will never give this to you, no matter what you do. Narcissists will never give you the satisfaction of acknowledging the things that they've done against you. It's one thing to understand this concept. It's quite another to internalize it and completely accept it. It simply takes time. There's no magic wand we can wave to stop the wheels turning in our head, to stop this preoccupation that we have with trying to get through to someone that's hurt us so much. This is just the result of trauma. Trauma can cause us to become obsessed and preoccupied with trying to solve this problem. And that's perfectly natural. It's normal. It's very difficult and it's very painful, but it doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. And this constant obsessive rumination of how to get revenge or how to get through to a narcissist is something that will simply wear down with time. I encourage you deeply not to act on this obsession, not to act on this rumination and on this deep desire to somehow get through to this person. It's much more effective to find trusted friends that are not in contact with the narcissist or to find professional help through a therapist or, or somebody like that to find healthy avenues of expressing yourself. You can journal or otherwise write your feelings down. You can even write letters to the narcissist if that makes you feel better and then just don't send them. And I promise that these feelings will eventually wind down and that you will eventually become able to accept that some people you just cannot get through to. There are some people that are just cruel and have pathological ways of relating to people and there's just nothing you can do about it. If you've had the misfortune of having a person like this touch your life and hurt you in this way, there's nothing you can do to fix a person like this and there's really nothing you can do to teach them a lesson or to get through to them. I promise that this rumination will wind down and that you will eventually come to peace with it if you just keep working on it and you don't give up on yourself. Now, how to actually get revenge on a narcissist? I hope this doesn't feel like a bait and switch. It's simply the truth. The best way to get revenge against a narcissist is to ignore them and to move on and have a happy life. Now, it's gonna take some time to recover from what they've done, but ignoring them and refusing to treat them as if they're important and moving on with your life in a way that doesn't include them is the best way that you can make them feel unimportant, that you can really hurt them if that's your goal. <laughs> Narcissists that contact you or otherwise provoke you are looking for a reaction because the reaction makes them feel good. It makes them feel important. The best thing you can do is ignore them. If a narcissist texts you out of the blue and asks you how you're doing or maybe they insult you or provoke you or whatever and you respond by saying, go to hell, 
that makes them feel kind of important because it shows them that they're able to influence your emotions. Now, if you just completely ignore their text, that's something that's really going to bother them. And if you move on with your life and you rebuild your life and you rebuild your identity without them, you're showing them that you don't need them and you don't need anything they have to provide. And anyone that's going to treat you in the way that they've treated you is no longer going to matter. That's how you get revenge on a narcissist. And it happens to be the healthiest thing for you. I know that in the beginning stages of recovery, you have to kind of fake this a little bit. I know for me, recovering from a trauma bond, it was extremely difficult to resist the urge to contact the narcissist or to respond to messages. I wanted nothing more than to interact somehow to try to communicate, but I resisted the urge and I ignored all messages and it really was the most effective way for me to detach and heal and let go. And it also was an effective method of revenge. But as time went on and as I healed and as I came to accept the situation and to accept the narcissist for what they were, I slowly lost my desire for revenge. And it truly did become about me moving on with my life and about the lessons that I took with me. And I really hope that this is a place that you can arrive at as well. I know that it's possible for you, even though when you're in the midst of it, I know it can seem far off. It can seem like an impossibility. It can seem like you're never going to be at peace and that the pain is never going to end and that the rumination is never going to stop. But I promise you that if you continue to fight for yourself and you continue to force yourself to do the healthiest things for yourself, that things will get better and you will lose your preoccupation for revenge and communication. And you'll wake up one day and wonder why you wasted so much energy trying to get through to someone that really just doesn't know how to communicate with other people and really is not interested in communication. You'll wonder why you wasted so much emotional energy on someone that simply is not worth it. I promise that you can arrive at that point and you can arrive at a point where you will look back at the things that you're going through right now and you will thank yourself for fighting the fight that nobody else could fight for you. And you will thank yourself for doing all of the things that you needed to do to arrive in a healthier, happier place. I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks, bye.